what's going on everybody welcome back to ways of the synth thank you so much for taking time to check out the channel please make sure to like comment subscribe and follow us on twitter and instagram at ways of the synth so today finally some new star wars black series figures arrived and i got din i got luthan i got bix and i got mon mothra so I already had the, the Cassian because I bought the Cassian and B2 Emo 2-pack uh, when it was on sale. So I got that. And uh, other than that, I am still waiting on Cal Kestis and the Luke. They are pushed back for some reason. Cal still says that he's coming in August for whatever reason. Um, even though Luke's supposed to be due like any time now. So it, it, it beats me with these release dates and why one figure from a wave is, is delayed or... You know, these have been tricking on out such in a weird way. So I had no plans on picking up the HK87 droids, but once I saw the Ahsoka trailer, I got suckered in. So I have two of them coming too. Uh, this way I can put them in my upcoming Ahsoka display with those figures, um, which I already have Ahsoka, obviously. So really cool. Um, really overall, a pretty solid wave of, of characters, some new characters. Uh, the fact that we got these Andor figures very quick when hopefully we'll get Mandalorian figures very quick because there's a lot from this new season that I really want and I don't want to wait two and a half years for them. <laughs> but let's take a look at each one of these and we'll open them and we'll check them out. This is, I guess, one of the last plastic-free packaging waves. Thankfully, we're getting rid of this and going back to a window where we can see the figure in the package which is much more better in, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at these. So first up, we'll do Din from Mandalorian. And this is cool. Uh, and, and it's funny how we amass like a trooper army from characters wearing this disguise. You got Han, you got Bill Burr, and now Din. Um, so you got basically three troopers that, you know, are all in that disguise. I more than likely will be taking this head sculpt off and using it on the Mando that has the removable helmet. Um, I did pay a lot less than retail for this one specifically, so I'm happy with that, totally fine. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much why I picked this one up, so Din would have a better head sculpt, and I don't have to pay uh, out the ass to get a painted one. So here is a look at Din outside of the package, and I gotta admit, mine came out really good i had seen a couple people's that were like really hard where like the face wasn't printed on properly it was kind of sideways and it made him look like his cheeks were real fat but this actually looks really really good i'm i'm happy with the way this head sculpt looks uh overall we know how this figure is um probably will pop another head on throw the bucket back over and just use you know this as a background i did the same thing with the bill burr um, he's just a background character and I popped that Bill Burr head off. So that's probably more than likely what I'll end up doing with this too, since I'm going to be using the Din Sculpt on that Mando. Oh yeah. So this looks way better on this Din instead of the other horrible head sculpt. And the helmet actually fits 10 times better over this head sculpt. So yeah, new Din. He looks great. <laughs> That's going to be awesome. And then what I ended up doing is putting that ugly looking din on this body. So I'll just put the helmet back over that one and call it a day. But you can see them side by side and it's night and day. You know, this has no real comparison to Pedro. And this I feel like they, they really nailed. Here, let me, uh, let me take the cape off so you can really see it. Yeah, I think that looks so, so much better. And like I said, the Mando helmet goes on so much better over this. It doesn't uh, pull and tug like it did on this one. So really, really cool. I definitely like it. Huge improvement. And next up, we'll take a look at Luthen Rail. He looks really cool. Um, I just wish this coat was soft goods and not rubber. Because I've seen a lot of people's reviews of this already. And it seems that that rubber coat... And the weird sleeves that they did really kind of hampers the figure a lot. So let's get this open and let's actually take a look at the figure. Um, and I did see some really incredible head sculpts along with this too. So hopefully this one's just as good as the den that we just did. All right, so here's our look at Luthen. And like I said, take a look at this. Ready? Like, what is he supposed to do? <laughs> with his arms like this. Like... 
How stupid does that look when you try to pose him other than his arms just being like straight up or just holding stuff? Like, yeah, I, I'm not a fan of this at all as far as like the coat and the arms and these pants. Look at the legs. Like, yeah, they, they really should have redesigned this figure a lot differently. Uh, maybe chose a different outfit for him than this one specifically or just like I said, should have done the soft goods and, and called it a day because this really hampers the figure a lot. I mean, he does pose well because like the arms are solid and then the coat's rubber. Um, but yeah, he's like a big chunky boy. The head sculpt does look really good, um, but I would definitely, this would be one I'd definitely wait for on clearance because he'll definitely be there, I think, because he can't really do much. He comes with this knife in his little thing. A lot of you people kept thinking this was a lightsaber. It's not a lightsaber, it's just a knife. Um, he's a regular guy. And here is the handgun that he comes with. So, cool, nothing crazy. Uh, overall, would have liked to see maybe some artifacts, see maybe the, uh, the box that him and Andor, you know, the reason he goes and meets Andor in the first place for. Uh, definitely, when you're doing figures like this, there we need more than just like, this this does not justify like this figure that can't really do anything so more world building stuff less this <laughs> also the engineering on this does not even have a holster or any place to put this knife so literally he's just got to hold his gun and hold his knife because there's no other place for them you did this big ridiculous coat and oversized pants and didn't put a holster or anything on it Dumb. Yeah, not not, a, not really a fan of this one. Now next up, let's take a look at Mom Mothra. Of course, I had to have this. Genevieve O'Reilly looked absolutely stunning in Andor. Um, she looks stunning in this figure, but I did hear that because of the way they designed it and designed the dress, and she's got those really bad ankles that seem to run in the females in Black Series, that she doesn't really stand well. And because of the weight of the dress and it not just being like a traffic cone to hold her up, she kind of falls over a lot, at least from what I've heard. But uh, I definitely wanted her to set up my Rebels display. So what I've decided to do is, is break down all my figures and have them up on the new display behind me. And I'm going to make dioramas or, or you know, get some 3D printed parts to make some dioramas for each set of figures. So what I decided to do for Andor, Rogue One, and like the overall Rebel Alliance is just do like a briefing room where they're all kind of around the hollow table. So I definitely needed Mon Mothra to lead that meeting. So it looks really cool. Let's get this open and check it out. So yeah, I see what people are talking about right out the box. They gave her those stupid heel ankles. Stop making figures with these ankles. They are the worst. They do not stand for anything. If you're not gonna make them flat-footed, then have them be poseable and be able to stand on their feet. Cause she's definitely not because of the restrictions of this coat. Oh my God, I'm probably gonna what I would recommend doing is probably cutting some slits along the sides so in this way you can actually like move her legs and get her legs to stand under her because if not you're gonna have a terrible time also she does not come with a single accessory so it's literally just her by herself beautiful beautiful figure face sculpt and accuracy looks incredible but for her not to come with a single thing, like nothing, you couldn't give her the gift or, you know, she got for her husband from Luthen shop or something. Yeah, that's not a good look. So overall, we're one and two with this wave so far. For another one, I would 100% wait for on a deep, deep discount. And last but not least, let's take a look at one of the most beautiful women to ever grace Star Wars, Bix Colleen. Uh, this looks really, really cool. Um, I did talk about it in my coverage of Star Wars Celebration that uh, I loved the interview they did with her and her explanation of like the growth we're going to see in the character for season two. I thought she was going to be more involved in the first season, which she wasn't. 
but I am looking forward to seeing a lot more of her in season two where she's going to seem to be more of a focal point and main character. But this looks really cool. Um, like I said, I I'm looking forward to seeing the role she's going to play and, you know, what's going to happen to her. Because obviously she's not there with Kassa uh, when Rogue One comes around. So unfortunately, I, I don't have high hopes for her, her future. But maybe, maybe she survives somehow. Uh, but let's take a look at this and check it out. All right, so here is our look at Bix. And in my opinion, she might be the best figure out of the wave so far, at least out of these four that I opened. Um, I really, really like this. She's got solid feet that, and she can actually stand. She can pose really well, even for having this be, uh, um, you know, the, the plastic or the rubber, I guess you could say. Um, she definitely has posability. And this has a lot of customizing options too, if you're a customizer. Like this would make for a fantastic Reva after Kenobi. Uh, just swap the neck, swap the hand, swap the head and put Reva on this body. And, and she would look absolutely fantastic too. So this looks really, really great. Um, I definitely like this a lot. This, this is probably, like I said, um, my favorite one out of the four so far. Uh, she's got a lot of detail to her. She just looks really, really good. And then she comes with this data pad, and then this slides out of the data pad like this, and then slides back in. There's like a track to it. I, I'm not really sure what the, the purpose or feature of that is, especially like the strap, um, but it looks cool. So uh, yeah, Bix looks pretty awesome. Well, that'll do it for today. Overall, none of these are bad figures per se. It's just the engineering choices that they chose really hamper uh, some of the mobility and, and being able to pose. Um, again, and the lack of accessories with all of these figures really is a shame. Uh, especially when you look at like the upcoming Bad Batch re-releases, all of them got even more accessories than they already had the first time around. So I mean like, they gotta find some medium with this line as far as like, hey, if we're paying this money, we should be getting what G.I. Joe is getting, you know, world building things, more more things from the shows, different pieces and props and different things that we can use like with our figures in displays, toy photography. That's what we want in this line. And, and I just don't understand why they don't seem to grasp that. Um, they seem to think that like they can limit articulation and, you know, just constantly just give us the same kind of figure over and over again, uh, which is basically what they did with a lot of this. Um, but like I said, I'm not blaming the figures per se. They're all very good figures. They all look very well. All the head sculpts in this, out of these four look phenomenal. Um, they really capture the likeness of each individual actor. So that is great. But like I said, I just think they need to do better in that realm of adding more accessories and making these figures worth the price point. Because if not, that's the main reason why you're going to see people wait these out and go to clearance. And I don't blame you, honestly. Probably all four of these. Bix might be a little hard to pick up. I'm not sure how she's going to sell. Um, but they, they're definitely worth waiting for uh, if you can. Like I said, I got most of these all on a deal with the pre-order guarantee. Um, so I was very happy about that. But again, yeah, I would probably, for the most part, wait these out if you can. But thanks again so much for taking time to check out the video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, may the force be with you. We would be honored if you would join us.